Welcome inside my 17th buy to let investment property. I completed on this property yesterday, which was the 16th of June, 2022. And today I finally come through the door to start the renovations and turning the property around, which is what this video is going to be all about. If you are interested in following me through the journey of how I prepare this property, ready to accept its first tenants, then you're absolutely in the right place. My name's Dan, welcome to another video. If it's your first time here and you're interested in hearing about all things buy to let property related, make sure you start now by subscribing and clicking the bell to ensure that you don't miss a thing. So first of all, just to give you and me a bit of a feel for the property, let's have a quick tour around before I actually start doing any damage at all. Now in the lounge, first of all, the things that are sort of standing out to me is that we've got this really thick, heavy wallpaper all over all of the walls. Now, of course, I could actually leave this wallpaper on because it's not in bad condition at all. However, in the future, just like it is doing here, it is gonna to start to come off. So the way that I see it now is, although it's gonna cost me some time, effort, energy, hassle, and money, if I do this job properly by actually stripping all of this wallpaper throughout the property and actually paint them, then in the future, it will be far easier, quicker for me to turn this property around as the tenants turn over. Now you can see that there's a shelf unit here, there's a shelf here as well. I'm gonna take both of those off because if I leave these in the property, then they actually become my responsibility. So let's say, for example, the tenant puts something heavy on there, it falls out, comes out of the wall. It's my responsibility then to put the shelf back up. Now I'm looking at this fireplace and it's a bit of a shame really because this floor is absolutely fantastic and it would be perfect for a buy to let rental property. However, this fireplace is really, really dated. And for me to future proof this property, to make it not look nice, modern and clean for tenants moving in, you know, over the next sort of 10, 20 years, that fireplace is gonna have to go, which is a bit of a shame because it's gonna cause problems on the floor for me. Also, you can see that there's gonna be issues with holes in the skirting at the bottom. So I am gonna cause myself some problems. However, I do feel that it's better to take on that short-term pain now for the long-term gain. As we come through, the lounge then takes us directly into this small kitchen. The boiler in this property is actually relatively old. So I'm gonna get my plumber in to give it a service, um, give it a check over just to see where we're at with it. I was really impressed actually, and really sort of thank the vendor. They've absolutely cleaned out the oven and it looks good to go, the hob's good to go. And this kitchen, although it is quite dated, it isn't actually that bad. So with a kitchen of this sort, I would leave this um, just until it's damaged enough in the future that I need to replace it. But as it stands right now, if I give this kitchen a bit of a freshen up with some decent white paint, make it look clean, I will actually probably be removing this crappy little um, cupboard in the corner here just to create a little bit more space. Now, just before we go upstairs and take a look, I'll show you the garden. So we've got a shed out here in the garden and then the garden is looking absolutely brilliant. Now, what I will be doing is taking that tree out of the corner there and these bigger bushes as well, because they're just gonna cause problems. And I am actually today, first of all, gonna be putting that shed onto Facebook Marketplace just so I can get rid of it. Now, the reason why I would, I'm sure you're probably thinking, but that looks like a decent shed and it'll be really good for tenants. And you will be absolutely right. However, again, it goes back to the fact that if I leave it in the property, then it's my responsibility. Just upstairs into the front bedroom here, it's got a nice decent radiator, a couple of good windows for some lighting as well. Now, luckily, and I think this is lucky for me, there doesn't seem to be any wallpaper on any of the ceilings, although it is across all of the walls. If we come then across the hallway just here, we come into the second bedroom. It is slightly smaller, but again, it's a double room. So we've got two double bedrooms in this property. I don't even know if this actually works but pretty old school light on here and a fan which I'll be taking down because that just looks to me like it's going to be a hassle for the future and then as we come into the bathroom now this is old school so you can see the wooden effect here and the shell which I really don't like at all so uh, it's actually on everything the sink the bath the toilet, it's everywhere. Um, so I would like to modernize this bathroom. I want to do obviously do it at minimal cost um, and to leave anything that I possibly can. So as an example, you know, this bath, although it's not overly modern, you can't really tell. And I think that that would be okay. Whereas, you know, this huge sort of flowery sink and flowery toilet, I might look to change them. But the biggest issue that I notice in here is look at this wallpaper. 
Um, so we've got wallpaper in the bathroom that has definitely got to go. And I'll also be getting rid of that cabinet as well and changing that over just for a standard mirror that fixes onto that wall. But I'm really glad that we've got a stand up shower and then nice white tiles all the way around as well. Interestingly though, all the spark is out there. Let me know what you think about this. The light is actually within the shower enclosure, which I'm pretty sure that shouldn't be there. But as I get my Sparky to come in and do an EICR check, um, which is the electrical certificate that I'll need to be able to rent this property out, um, then he'll be able to sort that out for me and let me know if it is legal or if it isn't. One of the first jobs that I'm actually doing is just putting a key safe outside the property. I'll put it somewhere discreet so you can't see it. And just a word of warning for you as well. If somebody does break into the property, steal your tools or do whatever they're gonna do and they've got access because of your key safe, then your insurance won't cover it. But for me, it's worth that slight risk just because it allows me to then manage my tradespeople to be able to come into the property when I'm not here. And I've just taken that that crappy cupboard out of the kitchen and they've actually tiled up to the cupboard so now I've got a hole in the tiles in the kitchen so I'm gonna to have to work out how I'm now gonna be able to match these tiles or do something with it okay so it definitely looks worse than it did before here's another neat trick that I do as well I've uh, actually got the local scrap guy on Facebook so I've just sent him a quick message on Facebook saying I've got some scrap metal set outside Please feel free to come and collect it when you're ready. And that's what, five minutes later, he's come to get it. If you're just starting out investing in property, why not pick up a free copy of my book, How to Buy to Let, where I take you through each and every single step of purchasing a safe, solid, sound, secure, and profitable buy to let investment property. This is the exact blueprint that I've used to purchase 16 buy to let properties and to build a portfolio that's now worth over two million pounds. Simply go to the description below, Click on the link and I'll send you out a free copy. We're just at the end of day two now. I've just done a solid weekend in the property and pretty much got it entirely stripped out, ready to start rebuilding. So I'm actually just wording up a for let advert now to go on Rightmove to advertise this property to get a tenant lined up. And you might be thinking, well, why are you doing it yourself if you've actually got a letting agent, you know, that is fully managing this property? And the answer to that is, well, the sales advert um, I want it to be perfect. It's easier to do it myself in the first place because then we can actually just reuse the advert every time this property turns around and a tenant moves on. So I took some photos when I went into the property. Even though it's not going to look as good and as modern as it will do when I've actually finished, I do need to get this property live because I want to drum up some interest before I'm actually ready. The last thing I would want to do is fully renovate it and then on that day that I finish, then start to advertise it. Tenants typically, typically take about a month or so to move in and that's simply because they have to hand in notice on the current property that they're in before they then move on. So, so here we are on the 24th for the 6th and it's now live on right move for 725 per calendar month. So let's see if we can drum up any interest at all. So I'm just working on the bathroom now. One of the reasons why I'm prioritising this room is because it's going to take somebody else to finish it off for me. And what I'm now doing is just painting over that skim with a watered down coat of emulsion paint. So this is standard normal emulsion paint just watered down. What we call a mist coast coat. So you'll just put one mist coat on and that's just so that plasterboard, that um, skim or that plaster just soaks in the moisture there um, and just leaves a film just on the outside and that will prepare the surface ready for me then to start putting the bathroom paint on. Here's something that you've probably heard me mention this before if you've watched my other property videos, but how people live in properties where doors don't open and close smoothly, I will never know. So I'm just at a stage now where I'm getting some paint on the walls and I just wanted to let you know a technique that I always use in all of my properties is using exactly the same paint. So this stuff is actually Leyland. You can't really see it because I've got a bit of a brush stroke over there, but it's Leyland matte white wall and ceiling paint. It's from b and it's reasonably priced. And the reason why I use it is because these guys, Leyland, have been around for years. So what I can do is actually use the same paint around all of my properties. Now in this property and all of my other properties as well, I always paint everything white. So I gloss the window boards, the skirting, the architrave, etc., and then I paint the walls and the ceiling in this kind of stuff. Now the real the reason why I do it is because when I have to come back in the future, if I have a tenant turnover and I need to turn this property around, I can do it really, really quick. So I think I've actually messed up here. Um, I'll hold my hands up on this one. If you would have seen my last video, I actually got rid of the shed in my property number 16 and I put it on for 50 quid. I had loads and loads of people asking for it. This time, I put this one on for 150 quid. 
I have had 22 people who want the shed. Next time, I think I actually need to have a look at how much sheds are these days. Here's a bit of a time-saving hint and tip for you. Uh, wrapping up your paint tray, um, so your paint tray, your brush and your roller in just standard normal um, supermarket cling film will make it last overnight, probably about 24 hours before you need to give it a bit of a stir and a shake around. But what it will do is actually stop you having to wash it out every night and make it so the next day you can crack on, saving you a bit of time. I've now managed to get this flyer place ready for my plaster, which is super important and one of the jobs that I wanted to do first of all, because obviously relying on somebody else to come in and get the work done in the time frame that I've got. My, pl my plaster as well is absolutely super busy, so he's going to do me a favour and send one of his guys in just to cover it for me between jobs. So, and it just proves how important it is to treat your tradespeople right. If you get a decent tradesperson who comes and helps you out, who does a good job, then you really need to look after them because in this day and age, they're really hard to get hold of. And if I wasn't able to get these trades in to be able to help me with this property on this short turnaround, then it would just cost me money by keeping this property here longer. So we're on the 29th of June. I'm just on my way back to the property now. Um, what I've been doing is night shifts and weekend shifts at the moment. So when I'm finishing work in the day, I'm heading over there and I do one of two things. I set myself a list of tasks that I want to achieve that evening to keep myself going. So there's no downtime of me thinking what to do next. Um, or I set the time limit as well. So I give myself two and a half hours to do the three or the two tasks that are actually going to get me closer to finishing this project as quickly as possible. I've heard from my agent today that they've got, uh, well, as they classed it, a load of viewings tomorrow. So this evening I will be doing a little bit of tidying up as well. Now I don't really go out of my way to make it look amazingly tidy. Um, a couple of the rooms have now been painted so you can see the progression and see the work and what I find is that tenants actually prefer to see it almost in the making because they can see what work is actually happening and they can see that somebody's in there you know cleaning it modernizing it renovating it painting it decorating it etc so they don't really mind that it's in a bit of a state so I've had a council tax bill for this property now, which is quite normal. As soon as the uh, council get hold of my name as the new occupier, they will send me a bill through that's usually you know, just over a thousand pound for the year or so. So what I've actually done is just emailed them back um, and just said to them that the property is currently empty. So could they please add on there a um, empty discount? They give you, depending on whereabouts you're based and which council it is, but the chances are you can get a unoccupied discount, whether it be for a month, two months or three months. I'm just trying to work out if I can actually get away with changing a few of these boards on this floor. So here's a good one. My agent actually showed eight people around, potential tenants around this property uh, a couple of days ago. She sent me an email over saying that uh, out of the eight, four of them actually want to take the property. And there was just a few really brief um, details in with the information she sent over. So I've gone back and said, can you provide me with um, the salaries that the applicants are on? How many applicants are there per, per couple or per application? Uh, how long um, have they been in rented accommodation? Can they provide previous references from previous landlords? Can they provide references from employers? How long have they been in their employment? What are their jobs? Um, do they smoke? How long are they looking to stay in the property? Have they got any pets? So my agent's just come back to me, an agent that I've worked with for quite a while, um, and she said, oh, unfortunately, the person that took the viewings or booked the viewings didn't qualify them or take any of the information that you're asking for before we showed them around. So I'm now just going back to all of the tenants just to ask them the questions that you've asked me. I know there's a new person within the agency and all they've done when that phone has rung saying can I view it they've said yes no problem and booked them in which is really really poor and sloppy let's be honest I mean what's the point in wasting the agent's time the potential tenants time and my time if we're not going to fully pre-qualify these tenants so yeah slightly frustrated but I'm gonna well tomorrow when I uh, when I'm back in front of my computer I'm gonna give my agent a call um, and just re-emphasize and re-educate on how to qualify a tenant before we actually show them around my properties. Okay, so it seems my chat with my agent has actually worked. I've now got an email through with two sets of uh, potential tenants that are actually gonna be shown around my property today. Um, and I've got all of the details. So I've got where they're working, where, they, where their previous jobs were before these jobs, um, where they're living, where they're coming from, um, I've got salary details, if they've got pets, if they smoke, how long they're looking to stay in the property. Um, 
I've got a personal opinion from my agent about them. Uh, for example, very open, nothing to hide attitude, happy to provide all their details, references from previous landlords and from uh, current work and previous work if wanted. And I've got all of the details that I actually asked for now so I can make a really good solid decision of who to push through to the referencing stage. So you are not going to believe this. In fact, I don't believe this. I've just been to B&Q to, um, I took a bit of that flooring up from the lounge uh, to actually ask the guys in B&Q if they had anything similar where they said that all of their boards are too thick um, and the connections weren't the same they weren't compatible so they wouldn't fit at all so I was just sat in the car park of B&Q taking a photo of the board ready to post it into a Facebook group where I know a lot of the trades experts actually sit hoping that they'd be able to help me out with the make and model of the board I turned it over and on the back of it it gave the make the model the name of it and actually stating that it's from IKEA which I thought, well, this is ideal. Anyway, this weekend, my dad is down at my brother's down in Bristol um, because I live about an hour and a half away from the nearest Ikea. So I just sent him a message saying, um, if you're popping by an Ikea or if you're near one, can you pick up a pack of these boards for me? Anyway, half an hour later, he came back with a photo saying, are these the boards? And it turns out when my brother moved into his house two years ago, there was a pack of these boards in his garage that he's kept for a rainy day just in case he needs them. They're the exact make, model and colour that I'm looking for. Just had a WhatsApp message from my agent just saying to me that um, the two girls that she's just now speaking to about moving into this property, they've asked, would it be possible at their expense, could they change the carpets and have some grey carpets laid down in the property? To which I've said, absolutely. And I tell you what I can do as well, I can have my carpet guy fit them for them. Um, it will be nice and cheap and I can have it done whilst I'm renovating the property so it's ready and nice and fresh and clean for them when they move in. Not really sure what I'm going into tonight actually. When my agent was in the property showing these people around yesterday she sent me a message saying um, there's a stain on the uh, lounge ceiling have you sorted it did you know about it sort of thing so I messaged my plumber who's been in actually and refitted the sink and the toilet when I've been away over the last couple of days so I messaged him and just asked him what the crack was he's been back this morning um, and there was a leak so now he has fixed it but my agent sent me a photo and it does look like there's some water been seeping through the lounge so I'm gonna have to go and deal with that and see what it looks like okay so a couple of days while I've been away my plaster has been in and just feathered in um, just that hole that we had in the lounge wall there which looks really good um, and also my plumber's been in to sort out the bathroom um, which unfortunately has left a leak so now my lounge ceiling it's not as bad as it could be um, but I'm also well I'm gonna have to sort that out now so the bathroom is now looking a lot more modern than it was I'm definitely more happy with that sink um, and the back of that toilet that system there um, rather than the, the shell shape and the only bit that I actually left was these bits on the back, so you can see it there just where the soap is held and just that little bit at the back. But rather than have the upheaval of taking that bath out, I thought actually you're not really gonna be able to notice it or see it once if, I, well, if I do change the sink um, and the toilet as well. So that's just made it look a lot more modern. So just coming off the damp course that I actually did a couple of weeks ago, I was introduced to these Vectair fans. Now these are a constant run fan, which initially you would think that if you're going to have a fan constantly running, it's going to cost you an absolute fortune. But they only cost about a pound a year to run. They're actually designed for the social housing sector because once they're on the wall, you can't actually see the fan at all. So if you can't hear it, which you can't with these fans if they're on setting number one, then the tenants don't actually know that they're on at all. So here in the kitchen, I'm actually gonna have one positioned just up here um, on the top of the wall, just there between the boiler and the extractor fan that obviously you have to manually open. So you can't rely on tenants to always open that. I'm also gonna have the same fan put into the bathroom as well. They can be mounted either on a wall or a ceiling um, and they cost me about 108 pounds each. So I'm just pretty much changing all of the window handles on all of the windows around the property. If you look at these old window handles that were on, you can see this plastic sort of um, opener or lock here on it. Now, the trouble with this is where you put the metal key in it, the key just keeps swizzling around. So unfortunately, I can't open most of the windows, which is a bit of a nightmare. So these darn floorboards, they're a different grain. They actually, they're like a wood effect grain. Uh, whereas the ones that are down give the effect that there's loads of small boards um, laid on the floor. So they are completely different. So I really don't want to put these down and mismatch it uh, because I think it'll look really bad for the tenants. And I certainly wouldn't want it in a property that I was living in. So 
I think my only option now is to get my carpet guy to come in and lay a carpet for me. So I'm on a bit of a tight time scale now, obviously, because these tenants want to move in on the 27th and we're now on the 8th. So I need to get him out to measure up quickly and get these carpets ordered. Just got into the property now, what, we're five past six in the morning on Saturday morning. And I've only actually got two weekends now to turn this property around. So what I did last night, was write out a list of all of the jobs that I need to do in an order. So when I come into the property today, there's gonna to be no thinking involved. That Well, pretty much that's wasted time that I find if you think which job shall I do next. So I've put them all in order, I've listed them down, and now today basically it's just going from job to job to job to trying to get this place turned around as quick as I can, ready for the tenants moving in um, in just about 10 days or so. You can see behind me here that I've got lampshades and curtains now that I can go through. These actually come from a local charity shop, well, charity shops. Um, I just have a word with the ladies in there and they just give me a shout every time they've got um, a collection of stuff, which is lampshades, bathroom mirrors, curtains, etc. I do like to put curtains and soft furnishings um, into the property, just so it's, it's that little bit nicer when the tenants move in, they're not having to you know, mess around, try and put curtains up so they can have a good night's sleep. And it really does finish off the property. I've also uh, sent an email over to my photographer last night as well, just to see if I can get him in the day before the tenants come in, just so I've got some really good, decent, clean stock photos for when this property turns over in the future, then I can get it listed really quickly, even though the tenants will still be in it and their items will still be in. So I've got some clear, good, decent advertising photos as well. So I did give this lounge ceiling um, another coat of paint to try and get rid of these stains last night. But you can see that it's just come through. So I'm actually gonna have to put some stain block on that, which is a bit of a nightmare, but can't be helped. So I'm just about to try and start finding some curtains that are gonna fit. Um, and I'm just taking off these hoops here because I always use the eyelet curtains because it's just easier to change them in the future and, and basically set it up for the future. Um, but they've stuck the ends on these poles. The challenges that come with these things. So I'm just actually preparing this mirror now. I've taken the glass out and I'm just actually painting the frame. It's gonna go up in the bathroom. Um, I got it off the Facebook Marketplace a couple of weeks ago actually for free. Um, and it's a really good, decent, solid, big mirror. So it'll be ideal for the bathroom. Now I always put a mirror in the bathroom for my tenants. Obviously anybody in any bathroom is gonna to want a to mirror. And if I don't do it, then the chances are the tenants are probably gonna try and do it themselves. So I get kind of peace of mind that I know that I've secured a decent mirror to the wall, which will minimize and hopefully mitigate all accidents of the mirror falling off in the future and also as well if I know I've got one up there then it'll help the tenants when they first move in rather than them having to go out buy their own mirror and then try to screw it onto my wall. So I've actually just fitted this blind that you can see behind me here in the bathroom and um, I do find that the female tenants when the ladies are, are actually living in my buy to properties if there is a window um, that is close to a shower then they do just prefer something to cover it. Now I actually got this one from a charity shop it cost me about £1.50 I think £1.75 maybe um, but it is a waterproof one so it is actually designed for showers or bathrooms. One thing I always do check in bathrooms as well is just to go round the ground lines of any tiles that are inside a shower. And that's just because if there's any holes at all, even pinholes, then the water will get through and it is a sure way to kind of damage a property and cause yourself major, major issues. So I'm actually just fitting this carbon monoxide alarm now in the kitchen. So it just needs to go in the same area really or close to the boiler. Um, it has recently become law as well actually that you have to now have one of these in a property. And that goes as well as smoke alarm. So you need a smoke alarm on every floor. So I've got one in the lounge here. So obviously not in the kitchen, but in the main living area. And then up at the top of the landing as well. So it then just sort of covers and services all of the rooms upstairs. I'm now just giving this kitchen a really, really good clean. Now, the reason why I would do that and spend time doing it when I first acquire these properties is that when a tenant moves in, if I can prove to them and tell my agent actually to make a point of how clean everything is, then when they check out, we can expect it in that same condition. However, if I'm giving over properties that aren't clean, that you know they're dirty and dusty, they've got marks everywhere, they've got things left in the cupboards, etc., then I can't expect those tenants to leave it clean when they check out. And you get into this vicious cycle of dirty being left for dirty, which then in the end just end, ends up kind of deteriorating your property. So for me, it's really important to put the time in now to make these, this whole entire property absolutely spicking span because like I say when the tenants move out if they then don't clean it I can send in some professional cleaners and just charge them for it. I've got the problem now that where I've taken this cupboard out in the kitchen there's actually a square of the floor missing so what my plan is um, is to actually take this piece out from underneath the fridge. Well I've managed to get it out which is great just before I do put this fridge back 
I'm just gonna put a bit of boarding underneath the legs, otherwise I'm gonna have a drop. So the fridge will go in and then drop lower than the floor. So to get it out would be an absolute nightmare. I've managed to get the fridge back in, which is this one just here that you see, and the plinth as well. And you can't actually see underneath that I've just taken out um, a few of these floorboards. So I'm hoping that I can now cut them well enough that they actually fit in this hole. And then another little trick I'm gonna try and do is if you can see, I'm missing a little bit of skirting board just down there. However, underneath where the washing machine goes, I've got a bit of spare skirt in here. So I'm just gonna chop this off and see if I can fit it over there. I don't think that looks too bad. I'm gonna get a bit of gray grout just to fill the gaps. Um, but there's a slight mismatch if you can just see just there. But actually, it doesn't look bad at all. I might have saved myself actually having to redo this kitchen floor. So I've just stuck on the inside of the kitchen cupboard here, um, this piece of paper, which is actually um, what I call how to stay damp and mold free in your new home. So basically it helps the tenants, it, well, it helps me educate the tenants on how to keep moisture, mold, um, and to manage the ventilation within their property, which ultimately will obviously help me to keep the property fit and healthy for their rental in the future. I've also just popped on here the type of paint that I used on the walls and the ceilings, because often tenants will mark them when they're in the properties, and they'll actually want to touch them up themselves before they move out, um, so they don't have to obviously pay out of their security deposit. So that just helps them out a little bit getting the right paint. If you wanted to pick up a copy of my ventilation and condensation uh, instructions here for tenants to be able to pass them on to your own tenants then make sure you go to the video description and I'll put a link there where you can actually download a copy of it. So I'm just applying the mist coat onto this bare plaster now so all you do is take your standard normal emulsion paint um, and just mix it with water so it's nice and runny and you just paint over that. You only need to do it once but it'll just stop your plaster uh, cracking or peeling off or the paint peeling off from the walls once you've painted it. The other job that I'm just doing down here now is because I've got this skirting board off, it's a great opportunity for me to actually have a look just to see if there's any of the plaster touching the floor. Now the reason why I would want to double check this is just to what, well, it's called bridging, that where the plaster actually touches the floor, it just allows the water then to bridge from the floor to the plaster and actually rise up causing damp issues and problems. So you just want to make sure that there's a gap between your plaster, the bottom of your plaster and the floor itself and they're not meeting and touching. My letting agents come back to me and said that the tenants are super keen to have the hallway and the two bedroom carpets replaced and they're fully prepared to cover the cost of it as well. So I've said a couple of things. One, that I will do all the prep work so I'll actually rip out the um, the carpets that are in there now I'll prepare the floor and we'll actually use my carpet guy because we can get a good deal for it but what I also wanted to do is meet them halfway as well because obviously if, if they're going you know and replacing those carpets it's also going to make my property better as well and hopefully keep them there a bit longer so I've said that I'll cover the cost of the hall carpet if they cover the cost of the two bedroom carpets and then what I'll do as well is put a carpet in the lounge for them just because I can't obviously get that floor into match. This might be a handy hint for you if you are investing in a limited company or actually if you have any limited company involvement at all that you can actually prove you can get yourself a trade discount card um, at B&Q and many of the other DIY places as well um, which allows you to get a discount so Wix for example gives you 10% off at B&Q it works out on how much you spend on a monthly basis to how much you're going to get off but at B&Q I quite like it because you're able to go into the trade entrance which is always a lot quicker. So we're on the 17th of July and I'm definitely getting there now. You can see in the kitchen that those tiles or that wooden tile there has blended in quite nicely actually um, and I've just laid a tile down here so actually when you slide the washing machine in it doesn't get stuck uh, below these boards just here and the tenants obviously would have trouble getting them back out. I am still waiting for my Sparky to come in uh, just to put that extractor fan up the top there which hopefully won't um, create too much mess. He's just a little bit busy at the moment. So if we head up the stairs you can see that I'm ready for the carpets going down here. Still just doing a little bit of work in the bathroom. I managed to get a bath panel uh, made yesterday. Um, obviously it's quite tricky because there's just this little slope down here which is actually above the stairs um, so I've just had to shape it and get it fitted in there um, I just need to give that a coat of bathroom paint today. Managed to get the mirror up looking really nice which was uh, free off Facebook which is great and I've now got the curtain pole, the um, shower curtain pole ready to go as well. I just haven't put that back that up yet because again I'm waiting for the Sparky uh, just to put an extractor fan in, the, in that bathroom for me. Just trying to train the curtains here that you can see to um, pleat in the right direction. 
uh, glossed the loft hatch there. So these bedrooms now looking really good, really nice, white and clean, all done with exactly the same paint on the walls and on the ceilings and then used the gloss all the way around all of the woodwork as well. Then back into the back bedroom here. Again, it's in the same sort of state. It's ready to go, looking all good, fresh, nice and clean. I painted it inside that cupboard as well, so it's a little bit nicer for the tenants and I'll just pop a bit of carpet down on the bottom of it here. Curtains look great in this room, just waiting for that light to be changed over by my Sparky and then I can fit the lampshade um, and then that'll be good to go. So we're on the 19th of July and yes, if you remember rightly, this is the hottest day of the year on record. And guess what I'm about to do? <clears throat> go up into the loft space and lay some loft insulation. I know, absolutely crazy, but I've got no choice, really. The carpets are going down tomorrow, so I need to get it up there tonight. And the reason why I'm doing it is because yesterday I had a quick look on the EPC certificate. Why I left it this long, I really do not know. But now, obviously, I'm going through my EPC training. I'm very aware that actually in a loft space, you can get maximum points for just having 150 millimetres um, of loft insulation up there. And at the moment, there's only 75 millimetres. So it's actually bringing down my EPC score. So the EPC on this property is actually a D, but it definitely can get up to a C. So I want to do everything that I possibly can now before the tenants move in. Because in a few years, when the government dictate that we can only let properties that are going to be C and above, the last thing I want to be doing is coming back into this property when there's tenants in here trying to get that EPC rating up. So I've just got in the loft to start putting this insulation down and I've realised I've made a massive, massive schoolboy error. Can you see behind me? Can you see what that is? And what that is? Yes, they are spare planks for the floorboards in the lounge that I'm having carpeted tomorrow just because there's a small square missing where I took the fireplace out and I didn't think to check in the loft and I didn't check the loft when I first came into the property. So you can just see here what this insulation is like. Um, it's only, look, really small. There's hardly anything there at all. That's me sort of touching uh, the roof. So it's, you know, really, really minimal. So me putting this um, additional on top will absolutely help the EPC, but it'll also obviously keep the heat and make this property far more energy efficient. I just wanted to give you a bit of an idea of what a DEA, so a domestic energy assessor, will do when they actually come and measure the insulation that you've got in your buy-to-let rentals. Um, so they basically come up with a tape measure they drop it down the side here, um, close to the hatch, because I can pretty much tell you that no DEA is actually going to get into the roof space or into the attic here. So they just drop it down here. They look where it is on this uh, tape and they take a photo of it before then logging it. Now, I can tell you that anything over 150 milliliter, millimetres isn't going to get you any additional points. And as you can see, this is now looking a damn sight better than it was previously and... I have definitely hit that mark with my 150 millimetres of roofing insulation. And then a job I did manage to actually get done yesterday, again in the sweltering heat, was actually just to relay some slabs or put some slabs down here, just so it's a lot nicer for the tenants when they do move in. So I've decided in my wisdom I'm actually going to try and put these holes in the side of this property myself for the extractor fans. So I need one that's going to go through the bathroom. Just managed to get both of them holes cut ready for my sparky now just to wire up the fans on the inside and then I can actually put the vents on the outside. We're on the 24th of July and that is me done two days before the tenants move in one day before the professional photographer comes in and that is it for me on to the next project. Let me just show you the before and after shots. If you've enjoyed this video and got any value from it at all please do give me a thumbs up make sure you go below to subscribe and don't forget to pick up a free copy of my book how to buy to let simply go to the description click on the link and i'll send you out a free copy thank you so much for following me through on this journey of buy to let property number 17 thanks for watching and i will see you next time